So um, the session is about an hour. We do have written um, FAQs available. Um, so you can uh, peruse those on our website. Uh, we'll also be updating them after this session. So the, uh, the questions that you ask, if we haven't already have a written down answer for that, that will be updated on the on the FAQ document. Um, so if you have a friend who wasn't able to join, um, you can always tell them that they can read through those. Um, yes, so thank you everyone for your time and your interest this morning. Um, this session is going to be recorded um, and you consent to that by joining. If you would not like to be recorded, then um, unfortunately you'd probably have to step out. Maybe you can send in your questions and <laughs> view the recording afterwards, etc. cetera. Um, but we would like as many people as possible to benefit from the questions that you have and the answers that you give. So we'll have this um, put up on our uh, pages. Uh, in a few days as well, in case you want to come back and listen to it again or share it with someone in your network. Um, so again, welcome. Please give me a minute to check on my other panelists. Um, we'll be we'll have a few other team members joining to ask some to answer your questions, including anything um around finance. Um, you can also ask questions about the different partners and what else we have going on. But as much as possible, we'll keep to this particular project, this particular grant project, um, so that we can uh, really utilize the time as best as possible. So I'll just switch off my camera for uh, about a minute. I'll be right back on. Um, please feel welcome. Uh, you can already start typing your questions or you can say hello in the chat box. Let us know where you're joining us from, uh, what kind of work you do. Um, you never know your next collaborator could be <laughs> in the in the audience. So um, yes, welcome and thank you so much. And please give me just one minute to check on um, the other panelists. All right, all right. Uh, good morning. I see some people saying hello in the chat box. Um, I'm very pleased. Hello, hi, John Namai, um, joining in from Nairobi. Welcome, it's a brighter day than we've been having. The last week was quite warm. Welcome, uh, Ross Franks. Ross Franks is a good friend of Hiva from Buni Media, uh, always interested in collaborating, yes. <laughs> uh, very excited to see what we could be able to do together. Um, I see people joining by the second, very exciting. Um, I'll ask my colleague Nehemiah to also switch on his camera and say good morning. Um, Nehemiah will be handling any questions related to uh, finance and budgeting. Nehemiah, please say hi to your people. Um, hi everyone, uh, my name is Nehemiah. Um, I work with the finance and investments team here at Hiva Fund. I'm looking forward to having uh, a wonderful uh, feedback and uh, uh, responsive session um, with you all. all Thank right. you. Thanks, Nehemiah. Um, we are also joined by colleagues from the Alliance Francais. Um, not sure what the display name is. Um, please say hello. Hello everyone, oh, this yeah. is Harry mm -hmm. from the Alliance Française. We are here together with Claire, who is um, uh, at the Alliance Française as well. Yes, 
thank you, Hasita. I uh, welcome Hasita and Claire. Um, the Alliance Francais are our partner along with the French Embassy. Um, and they are going, they are going to handle any questions you might have about the wider scope of the project, um, as well as perhaps the venues or anything that they are uh, particularly well qualified to answer. Um, I'm sure most of the people in the audience have interacted with Alliance Francais at some point or another. They are a great, uh, powerful partner for the cultural and creative industries, um, really supporting in terms of financing, in terms of spaces and opportunities. Uh, and we're so excited as HIVA to be collaborating with them um, in this grant process and really look forward to, um, again, all the exciting work that's going to come out of it. So um, that's our panel. I'll say a few more hellos from the chat and then we can go into some of the questions that we've received. Again, um, if you have a question, you can immediately put it in the chat box, um, myself and I, wait, I should allow Olivia to also say hello. Olivia is our communications person. Um, she's handling the behind the scenes, um, checking your questions on socials, as well as in the chat box, in the DMs, and making sure that um, they all come to my attention so I can bring them to the panel. Um, and she's also the one who put together this entire uh, link and meeting room. So Olivia, please say hello. Uh, morning, everyone. Um, hello, it's good to be here. It's good to see so many of you join. It means that at least some people saw our communications, which we're really happy about. Um, yeah, looking forward to an interactive session um, and also continuing to interact with you guys behind the scenes on the various platforms and on the web page. Thank right. you. Thanks, Olivia. Uh, Olivia, as well as our uh, colleagues from uh, Alliance, uh, including Baldrin, are responsible for the stunning visuals uh, that you've seen uh, accompanying our posters. Um, and yeah, we love their work. So <laughs> thank you for showing up and, and giving them that extra bit of um, validation. Uh, I have as well Brian Mwanzo joining from Eldoret. Hi, Brian. Uh, Joan Kabugu from Eclia Films, and she's put her website there so we can all have a look at the great work Esila, sorry, Esila Films are doing, uh, joining from Nairobi. Uh, and a whole host of other people, some familiar names. I'm sure you also all know each other. Um, we've worked together before or have hoped to work together, and this could be our opportunity. So thank you so much for joining. I'm going to go actually into some of the questions that we've received over email. Um, and as we continue, I'll get to the ones in the chat box, et cetera. Uh, in case of any further clarifications, once again, you're free to um, uh, type in the chat box. Uh, I think we can also raise hands if we're not, if we don't get too, too uh, numerous, then you can have an opportunity to speak. But again, uh, please remember we have limited time and we would like to address as much as possible. So if you do speak, keep it um, simple. So I have two questions that are quite uh, closely related. We have an entrepreneur who works with uh, Shea Butter. Uh, they make Shea Butter products, I guess, for hair, beauty, and skin. Um, we also have an entrepreneur who runs a, a business with sneakers. Um, and both of these are in inquiring whether they're eligible for the grant. Unfortunately, you would not be uh, eligible for this grant, and this can answer any questions in terms of who is eligible. Um, so let's go through the eligibility criteria. This grant is particularly for performing arts, uh, music, and film. So uh, those are the three kind of umbrella uh, subsectors that we are working with for this grant. And if we go into kind of breaking down what is under um, each, then we can f further see a bit more detail. But um, this is not for kind of product-based um, creatives. Uh, so uh, people working in share butter, people who are selling sneakers, even creating the designs on sneakers, this is not particularly for you. This is for people who stand up in front of an audience and give a performance of some kind. Um, so that includes theater, it includes dialogue, spoken word and poetry, storytelling, um, dance, stand-up comedy, improv, magic, puppetry, pantomime. Um, we also have people who use um, tech uh, to give these performances. So if you are in multimedia or are doing some kind of transdisciplinary work, so you're combining some of the things we've mentioned along with some new tech, then you're welcome. As far as music, um, 
again, uh, emphasis on music that you're sharing with the audience at the time. So live music, uh, DJing, and then for cinema, we would have things like film screenings. Um, I suppose if you have done a film and would like to talk about it alongside the screenings or something with like a panel or um, director commentary, those kinds of things would be um, in involved. But in general, when we're talking eligibility, um, as the name suggests, there's someone on a stage and they're interacting with an audience. Um, second question that we can get into, uh, since, since there are so many artists looking to apply for the funding around Kenya, how many productions is the fund planning to fund around the country? So um, this is an interesting question, uh, and I'm bad at math, <laughs> so it's going to come with a lot of words, but we do not know how many we are going to fund because of the way the fund is structured in terms of having uh, tiers, depending on how many venues a practitioner wants to visit. Some people will visit the minimum of three, some people will want to go to all five, and that, that means that that envelope that they are uh, able to uh, access will vary. At the same time, there's a difference between whether you're applying as an individual, whether you're applying as a collective, a group, an organization. So because we don't have um, fixed ticket sizes, we cannot say that we only have this many uh, amount, this number of projects that we're going to finance. It's going to vary according to the applications that we receive, the quality of those um, uh, applications and then depending on what those applicants have asked for. So we cannot answer that question, but we're going to do uh, as much as possible, um, taking into account the eligible uh, value chains as discussed, as well as accessing the five venues across the country. I hope that helps. Um, we have a question here about the technical capacities of the CASIC venues. We do have a list. Um, let me see if I can share that on my screen. We do have a list uh, describing the venues, the five venues, um, including uh, an understanding of what technical capacity that they do have. Um, I'll, I'll share the list on the screen. If uh, Tom, Olango, Olango, or Tieno, you're in the audience, um, I think you're asking for a bit more detail. Could you uh, unmute your mic and um, share your question directly? Hi, um, thanks so much for, first of all, putting this together. So yeah, basically, I just need to find out, I know the uh, redirect link is, you know, uh, venues have front of house and have back line. I think just being able to know like the specifics of, I don't know, like what um, instruments are available for backline um, and with regards to like front of house, you know, like just the detail for, okay, whether they have like, what the front of house looks like, you know, like, is it um, your standard? It has subs, has, is it tops or is it like arrays? Um, what the um, mixer is as well, just to sort of like, allowed to know how to curate especially like a super like synchronized uh performance basically uh knowing like the mixer for example that's used can be able to allow to basically curate the performance better right. i don't know if i'm clear is that clear or did i just mumble over words no um i think what is clear is that you'd like a bit more detail in terms of names and brands of available equipment. Um, I think that's a bit detailed. I'll ask if uh, Claire or Hasita would like to give an, a spoken response, but I think that probably would have to work on a document and update this one uh, to give yeah. that level of information. Hello, Lango. Yes, you know, um, for all the venues, we can get you the details that you requested in terms of the um, sound uh, and the background the mixers and okay. the speakers, the subs, the monitors, etc. So we can get you those details and they, they can be posted on the HEVA fund um, uh, website once we have them. Okay, thanks, Asita. All right. Okay. Yeah, please give us about two days. Um, it'll be updated along with the FAQs and you'll be able to get that information. Cool, thanks. Right. Um. 
sorry i've lost my <laughs> my tab one minute all right um In regards to productions that qualify for the funding, does the production have to have been staged before? This is a question that we received over email. Um, the answer is that no, the specific production that you want to um, utilize this grant for does not have to have previously been staged uh, or publicized. Um, it's, it's possible as long as as you can demonstrate that the production is complete in the sense of if 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 it is a play you have the script complete you're not starting to write it uh if it is a music show you have written the songs you're not starting to write them so it is ready for uh implementation as aside from some final production mat uh, matters let's say um auditioning uh and rehearsals that kind of thing so you will need to demonstrate that the production is ready to go then in terms of historical work, we will ask you to upload links to work that you have done in the recent past, that is up to three years ago. Um, and this is to give us an estimate of the quality of work that you are capable of producing. So you can link to your social media, you can put up uh, videos on your Google Drive or Dropbox, and our panel will assess those against how you've described the thing that you are about to do and use that to estimate um, the possibility of you accessing the grant. Um, then we have Ross Franks, uh, creating an exact budget for travel and accommodation is challenging. Are flights acceptable and how flexible is the grant for this line item? Um, so I'll ask um, both Harsita and Claire, as well as Nehemiah to give some support as to how you can budget uh, around travel and accommodation. So one direct question is whether we can pay for flights. Uh, and the second direct question is how flexible the grant is around this particular line item. Uh, I guess in terms of, of changing costs in between the time of application and the time when the grant will actually be utilized. Um, Claire? All right, Nehemiah, can you give Hi. some? Mm -hmm. We're here now. Um, oh, yes. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so this is about whether how flexible we are in terms of our flights, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. So the thing is, you know, basically the conditions are that you know you're looking at you know depending on the number of venues that you're looking to do two, three, four, five um, Gazic venues. So how you fit it in? Flights are acceptable, um, but it will all be subject to the number of venues you're looking to do, and. Um, and obviously, you know, will and it has to be reasonable in terms of you know the production costs, the um, showcasing costs, and the um, travel costs. So there's there's no fixed percentage in terms of uh, say flights or accommodation. You can utilize um, of the eighty percent that is um, for for your production and travel. Uh, you can utilize. I suppose all of it, depending on what your budget is going is 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 doing. Um, so one, there's no restriction around that. Um, the other thing I heard is that flights are acceptable. Um, we don't seem to have any uh, requirements in terms of um, where you can stay or where you can't stay. That again is uh, has just has to be reasonable according to your production team and where you are traveling to. And as she's mentioned, the funding is tiered. So the more venues you go to, the more funding you get. But depending on where you're uh, traveling to, you may have differing uh, travel costs. Uh, Nehemiah, would you like to add anything? Um, I feel like Claire has um, covered every aspect of the question. OK. Um, Ross, would you? Would you like to add any uh, refinement to your question? Does anyone else have another question in in terms of budgeting around transport or travel? I'll just give a minute. All right, Ross says it's clear. 
if anything else comes up from anyone else, please feel free to raise your hand or um, put something in the chat. Wamboi Kibue from Washika Dao Collective. Uh, I was wondering, is the budget included in the site area section, i.e. 1,000 euros per site? Uh, is this budget inclusive of the project's budget or is each the site budget and project budget separately budget? Um, Wamboi, um, I think you'll have to switch on your mic and ask that question um, again. Wamboi, if you're in the audience, please unmute and speak. Yes, I think someone has elaborated a question better just in the chat. So maybe if you go down, you'll be able to answer me. Uh, who who is it? Do you have a name? I can read their question. Just in the chat, there's someone who has asked a question that will uh, elaborate further on what I've asked for. Yes, so please. as you answer that, um, which question? Yeah, let me see. Now you said now just down in the chat. Okay, all right. Okay, hopefully when we get there, uh, you let me know. Um, pardon me. Okay, so yeah. All right. Uh, Tyen from Nakuru. Would the grant cover the production of a film, or it just covers the distribution? Um, the grant would cover primarily distribution. We would expect the film to have completed production by the time you are applying for this grant. Um, you could possibly do some post production, but it would have to be very um quick turnaround um, because again, the implementation period for this uh, fund is quite short. It's about six months. So you don't have a lot of time to, to get into a lot of work. Uh, so it would not cover pr production. It could cover post-production, um, but that would also be time limited. I hope that's clear. Um, Alea, Alea from the Lam Sisterhood, uh, is the 50,000 shilling venue facilitation fee per venue, is that essentially a venue hire fee or do we need to budget for a separate venue hire amount? Uh, that would count as the venue hire fee. So um, in every, let's say we call each, each trip to a, a venue an outcome. So as you're doing your budget and you say outcome one is um, performance at LAMU, then that would have to have its 50,000 venue hire fee. Um, and then if you go to a second one, that would have to have its 50,000 shilling uh, venue hire fee, um, which is extracted from the grant. Um, then we have a question on pitching from John Namai. What formats would you like someone to do a presentation as a pitch? Some formats like live theater. Um, the pitches will be done virtually similar to this. So you will be in uh, your location and the panelists will be in a separate location. Um, you will be provided with a pitch deck. Um, it, I think it will be possible to get a few minutes, but probably not more than five uh, to demonstrate if your demonstration doesn't work as well on PowerPoint. Um, but I would rely strong, stronger on the links that you su supply with your uh, application form um, and whatever you can, uh, so you can communicate via PowerPoint and via speech than putting up a small production. Um, the, the pictures won't have that kind of time and we also won't be able to visit uh, a live location. All right, uh, any questions on that on pitch? Um, any additional or can I move to this the next question? All right. Um, Raphael Owino, uh, Naf here from Nairobi. Can you clarify on the thousand euros per tour site, especially for film, how does it work? Are the funds only for marketing or it can also be used for shooting? Uh, so Raphael, if you're still in the audience, I'll also ask you to unmute. Uh, what I can answer directly from that is again, uh, if this is related to film, we expect the production to be complete, so you cannot use it for shooting. Um, 
I suppose you can say marketing. It does not have to be a premier only. Um, you can adjust your marketing or your distribution around any uh, structure that you would like. Uh, and as far as a thousand euros per tour side, that would mean that you are applying as an individual. Um, and that just simply means that you'd have a full budget of a thousand euros for whatever activity and travel you would want per site that you would visit. Uh, but please unmute your mic and, and let me know if I've uh, gotten that clear. Or Okay, Raphael would not be able to unmute. Uh, please do uh, add anything in the chat if, if I can give you any further clarity. Uh, Brian Monzo uh, has a question on the template links on the application form. Uh, you've been experiencing challenges, more so getting the template of the work plan and the technical rider. Um, apologies for that. Um, you should be able to access via the links that are embedded. Um, you can send us an email to askhistage at gmail.com. We can share the links with you. And I'll also ask Olivia and Rachel, if possible, to put the links in the chat box. You can access this, them during this session and uh, then download them in your own time. Um, so anyone, uh, yes, right. Uh, right on time, Olivia is on it. Uh, the budget and work plan template links are in the chat box right now. They've been put in at 11.28. So you can always um, use that link. Please uh, just click it now to let us know if, if there's still a challenge um, and we can address it. Then um, Joan Kabugu. In terms of film screenings, do the venues have capacity for the same or do production companies need to figure out that more specifically and maybe allocate budget for the same? And two, is there a specific preference for fiction or documentary projects? Uh, two, I'll answer the second question first and then um, Harsita can comment on the screening. Um, there is no preference. Uh, between fiction or documentary projects for film. Uh, both are equally welcome. Um, in terms of uh, venue capacity around screening, uh, again, I'll ask Harsita to comment um, as I pull up the, the venue capacity document. You can have a look at it. Okay, most of the venues have a screen, but may not have projectors. So I think it's stated in the... Um, the rider for the uh, venues, uh, which ones have screens, which ones have what screens and projectors. So, but if you're planning to tour with films, it'd be advisable to look at the um, the venue uh, technical riders and plan accordingly. You might need to budget for hire a projector and the screens are not very large. So again, you know, depending on what sort of um, filming, um, equipment, I mean, sorry, screening equipment that you need, you might need to budget for that. Yes. All right. So we can do a quick scan. Um, Nairobi has screening equipment in terms of white fabric and projector. Uh, Nakuru has a screen, but no projector. Uh, Kisumu, that is Dunga Hill Camp, has a screen, but no projector. Uh, Mombasa, similarly, a screen, but no projector. Uh, and Lamu, Lamu Youth Alliance has both a screen and projector. So um, you could have taken a quick note of that or that information is available on this list. Great, um, Joan. So um, hmm, John Namai is asking, in terms of publicity, are the ven... In sorry. <laughs> a few more have come in as I'm reading. In terms of publicity, uh, would the venues allow ticketing and support the marketing of a successful production or would we uh, require free access for the audiences? Um, that is also, I think, a question for um, Harsita. Are our grantees allowed to sell tickets? Um, in terms of marketing, um, you should have a marketing approach and 
uh, items in your budget around marketing your uh, production um, and not rely on the venue to do that for you. Uh, you may be able to collaborate with the venue, um, but I'll just ask Harsita to confirm around the possibility of selling tickets. Thanks, Akati. Since these um, uh, these productions and tours are going to be supported by the Embassy of France, and one of the objectives is to enable um, the artists to reach a wide audience around the country, um, and since it is being subsidized, um, ticketing is not allowed. All right. So um, we are not going to uh, be able to sell tickets. Uh, so uh, events will be free. Uh, in terms of marketing, as I've mentioned, you should have a marketing approach plan, et cetera, in your um, application and include any items you would need for that in your budget. Um, so we have our links available in the chat box. You can get the budget and work plan and the FAQs um, in the in the chat box, uh, time stamped 1128. Um, next question in the chat box is from Olivia Ambani. Hello, Olivia. Uh, when you say the body of work needs to be African culture history, is this in the traditional sense? Uh, no. This is in any sense, um, but we do need to feel that the work is grounded and speaking to African culture or history or current or future, but the themes need to be very grounded in, in the continent. Uh, Ross Franks, is it possible for an organization to put in more than one application? Uh, no, we are going to accept one application per applicant. Great. Uh, Brian mentions there's still a challenge with the Dropbox um, and has put the error he's getting on the chat. Olivia and Rachel, please have a look and let us know if that's something we can address. Um, Brian, we've seen it and uh, the team is going to have a look at it for you. Uh, George Shege from Nairobi, how long will we have at each venue? Will we have a set number of days per location or is it dependent on our ask? Uh, so yes, it will be dependent on your ask. Um, final uh, scheduling and uh, sequencing of the different uh, applicants at the different venues will happen uh, once they've been selected and in collaboration with the venue owners so that we make sure the uh, utilization of the space is reasonable uh, and works with your work plans as well as uh, their calendar. Are there any accounting requirements once one has won the grant? Uh, I, uh, we have reporting requirements. Um, we will be providing you with templates uh, that you'll fill. You will only need to provide two reports, uh, one in the middle of your grant and one at the end of the grant. Um, the report is both an, a narrative explanation of what you've been able to do from beginning to middle and from middle to end, uh, as well as um, demonstration of how you've spent that uh, money. Uh, Nehemiah can give some uh, description of what a financial uh, report looks like, but it's quite simple and primarily you'll need to keep your, your invoices and receipts uh, just for sharing. Uh, Nehemiah? Thank you so much, Akuti. So um, with regards to um, the financial report, uh, ideally we will share an Excel report, uh, an Excel uh, template, which uh, then you will uh, be able to key in um, the expenditures that you have incurred um, across time as you are carrying out your project or program. And um, I, th I also think um, there will be need um, to also share um, uh, physical documents or scanned uh, supporting documentation to ver uh, for easy verification of the amounts dictated as expenses against the the grants. However, we'll share we'll share uh, we'll share a template um, once that time comes. 
um, the financial reporting template and also further guidelines as to how um, documents will be presented. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, Nehemiah. Uh, George, I hope that answers. I think that's what you meant by accounting requirements. Um, so we we do have to, we are accountable to uh, the funders to show where the funding went. And so that is what the work of the financial report, uh, as well as the supporting documents is so that we can kind of trace that this amount of money was given into your dedicated bank account. Um, it was spent on this day and for this piece of uh, equipment or to pay this person or to buy this ticket. Um, I think it should be simple enough for your team to manage without an accountant, but it is also possible to budget for an accountant's input in your admin costs. So that that could help if if that's something that um, you, you need. Um, and then finally, is there room to get other partners or is this fund exclusive? Um, Harsita can comment on the possibility for uh, co-financing. Uh, yeah, it is possible. You can get other partners on board if you like. All right. Perfect. So, George, those were your three questions. Um, I hope that has been helpful. So, um, in relation to the last one, if your uh, project uh, has a bigger budget than you'd be able to access through this, uh, you're able to top up those funds um, from, uh, from additional funders. Um, Ibrahim Mkude, hi Ibrahim. Uh, is it possible to apply with a partner outside of Kenya and implement in both places? Uh, this fund is exclusive to Kenya. Um, I think, uh, Harsita, would you like to add any comment uh, around that? It is exclusive to Kenya for the classic venues in Kenya. Yes, so unfortunately, Ibrahim, uh, for, for, for this particular grant, you would have to implement in Kenya uh, in the five named venues. Phoebe, Apondi, if you're applying with three people or rather as one, but for three people, does this fall under individual or collective? Um, I think that depends. Could you unmute your mic and uh, give us a bit more detail? Would you be traveling as so, a <laughs> Um. So like with the with the platform of basically the screening where three people, but I'm applying on their behalf. So would three people follow fall under a collective or I can apply for this under as an individual yeah, and to, still spread it across the three? I need to understand when you say you're applying for three people, what you mean? Oh, okay. Not like for three people, but like with our screening, we are three people who came together to start to share our films, right? So... I had about the funding uh -huh. and mm -hmm. I'm the one who started the screening. So I want to apply. So I'm asking if I'm applying and knowing that I did, did it films. to other people. I think, I think so you, we could, are three together. you could put that as an ad hoc collective. Okay. Uh, especially if you're saying that three people have three outputs. Mm. Yeah. Um, I would put that as an ad hoc collective. Um, and if possible, each of the three people can submit some sort of um, previous work that they've done that we can utilize to, to judge that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right, uh, Sally Ngoiri, how do I access the template for production schedule and still can access the template? Um, the links are in the chat box above your question. If if you had joined by 11.28, you should be able to see them. Please try and access it again. And if you can't, then just let us know and our team members will try and, and work. Um, Olivia mentions to access the templates, please download the template and then edit it. So do not try and directly edit the one that comes onto your screen, but download that and then edit that on your computer. Uh, Tom Olang says there seems to be a LinkedIn folder that needs access to be granted, and this is the project template. Um, again, please look at the links that we've submitted above. Let us know if you're having the same issue. It should not be a LinkedIn document. It should be a Dropbox document. 
Yes. Um, but yes, uh, as mentioned, please try the links. If you have the same, um, just put it in the chat box. One of the team members will get back to you. Um, and again, do not try and edit the document directly, but uh, download it onto your machine and work on the downloaded version. All right, um, no more questions in the chat. Uh, I'm going to look at the ones we've received by email and also you can put up your hand uh, if you had, if you have a question. Um, so on Twitter, we received a question from Mr. Marimbet. Mr. Marimbet, if you're in the, in the uh, audience, please uh, raise your hand or type in the chat box because uh, your question would need a bit of elaboration. You're asking around the tour budget and sponsoring of individual projects. Um, Twitter handle, no one, not even a single soul mentions, I've gone through the application form and seen there's a section asking for a website. What happens if someone doesn't have one? You don't need to have a website. Um, it would be good if you did, but if you don't have one, then simply don't, um, put anything in that particular box. Um, we have asked for links to your social media, whichever ones you have, you don't have to have more than one. Um, but we do want to see that you have been working in this uh, space. And again, the links to your previous work will also be very useful to see the, the level uh, of quality that you're able to produce. All right. Um, and then finally, we have a question from uh, Daniel Mwangi. I really need to get into film and movie making, but lack capacity. How can Hiva help? Um, that's a little bit outside the scope of this uh, session, but if you are in the audience, please uh, raise your hand. I can speak to you at the end of the session and give you a bit of um, insight as to the kind of work that we do. Uh, Alice Wangoi, hi, can one be in a collective and still apply as an individual? Uh, yes, um, as long as you're not presenting work uh, prepared for the collective without the collective. If it is your individual work, you can definitely uh, present that as an individual and apply. Uh, we will not be looking into your multiple memberships. We know artists are doing a lot uh, in, in this town. So how you present yourself, as long as it is your work, um, is not an issue. Uh, I hope that's clear. Um, I'm looking for any raised hands. Uh, any additional questions and also waiting for anything that might come in via our socials. Uh, Lucy Oruta, are there any specific guidelines for applied theatre projects? Um, well, you could please switch on your mic and, and give us a bit more clarity, but we don't have particular guidelines for any of the projects other than what you see on the on the form, which is uh, that it is an original work, that you have um, demonstrable African um, cultural, social, or political themes, um, and that it is in one of the value chains. But perhaps if you if you elaborate on your question, I can answer anything else that's there. That's Lucy, if you'd like to speak. Or or type some more, but we are we are very open to the diversity of the type of work that you are trying to produce, as long as again, um, it's original work. You own it. Um, you have those. Okay, thank you, Lucy. You type. Um, you have those demonstrable themes. Um, it is ready for for presentation. Uh, so it's you're not start like at ideation stage or in the early stages of production. Um, yeah, we don't have much in the sense of of uh, too much detail on guidelines of what the projects should look like. Um, how do we classify a collective application? How different is it from an organization application? Um, there's not too much difference. Um, organization does have a an implication of more formalization and registration. Um, collectives can also be formal, formal and registered. They can also be kind of informal, like what we've had from uh, Phoebe, where you have a group of artists who will come together for this purpose. Um, again, it's not 
uh, it's not a very rigid uh, definition how you apply. It's generally, are you a group or are you uh, seeing an individual person? Um, and it doesn't have uh, much in terms of uh, much difference in terms of anything other than the funding amount you can apply for. If you do form an ad hoc uh, collective, then you'll have to decide amongst yourselves how you're distributing those funds. Um, an organization would probably already have a system in place for that. But we will not be asking you for your registration documents or anything of that kind. So that should be fine. Um, Jackton, is that okay? Would you like uh, any further clarification? You can let me know. I uh, think. Yes, Jackton. I think that's fine. I really wanted to understand if we are coming together as maybe two or three people, do we need certification, like maybe a company? Because sometimes we are, we are a production house and I feel applying as an individual is going to limit yeah. me rather than applying as a company. Yeah. Um, no, you don't have to have a historical registration. Perhaps in the process of um, contracting, we'll ask you to sign something that says that you're doing this project together, but you don't need a, a formal registration of any kind. Mm. Victor from Crony Productions, can theater productions apply or is the grant tailored to fit just film? Uh, theater can apply. Theater productions are included under the performing arts umbrella. Sally Ngoyi, can I work, can I apply with work funded by another organization, but I own IP and copyright? Um, I think that should be fine. Um, I, I think as long as you're funding, actually that should be fine. Harsita, or would you like to comment on that? Um, so Sally, was asking, yeah, Sorry. she's asking if she can apply with work that was funded by another organization, but she owns the IP and the copyright. Yes, possible. Yes. That should be fine. All right, Sally, that's possible. Is there a possibility for extension of deadline for application? Please state the deadline for all one more time, Tafadali. Uh, we will not be extending the deadline for this application and the deadline is the 20th of December. Um, Rafael Owino, um, we are looking for a finished project that can be premiered to the sites mentioned. What if I have that but have not done so much work previously? Can I still qualify? Um, so the the first part of the question is semi-correct. It doesn't have to be the premiere. It can have shown somewhere before. It cannot have shown somewhere before. Um, but it does need to be ready to, uh, to be presented and to tour. Um, if you have not done so much work previously, um, I think as long as you've done some piece of work that we are able to use as a metric to, to say that this is kind of the level of work um, that this person, this applicant, this group of people are able to produce, then our panelists will be able to judge um, accordingly. Um, also a reminder that it's a competitive process and it is limited. So um, not getting the grant in the end may not be an indication of the level of quality, et cetera, et cetera. It may simply be an issue of numbers. So I would definitely uh, encourage you to apply, definitely link some kind, even if it's one piece of work that you've done before, we're not counting the number of productions that you've engaged with previously. We're looking at the quality. Maina Munene, I intend to apply for a stand-up comedy show. In such a show, I will need a host or an opener. Does that count as a collective or do they fall under support staff performers for the one application? So again, I think that would be dependent on you and, and how you see your relationship with this um, additional person. How core are they to the show? How core are they to your application? So is it someone that you're working together with? Um, will they be at all the sites? In that case, you can put them as a performer that you will be paying versus as someone who will be kind of um, part of your application process. They'll come for pitches. They'll support you with addressing the budget. So I think that's an issue of how do you, how, what is the relationship with this second person? 
Um, Mina, if that's not clear, please uh, unmute your mic and we can go into that a bit more detail. It's clear, perfect. Okay, Alice Wangoi. Um, please, please unmute your mic uh, and ask your question again. Alice Wangoi, or uh, if you're not able to to speak, please type it out again. Uh, your question is not very clear. Your question is not very clear. Uh, Jackton, can one use a different budgeting template for their project? Please don't. Please use the template that you have been availed with. Um, Rachel, does the work need to be recorded or images are fine? Um, recorded would be best because we are talking about uh, performance and still images would only be capturing uh, specific moments in time. Um, if, if at all possible, please uh, lean towards recording. You could also put in um, reviews uh, if, if that's available to you. Um, and that could be something like something in the print media or online. It could even be as simple as, as um, comments on your, on your social media page. But um, again, as much as possible, something that will give us an idea of um, the quality of work that you did, uh, the level of things like um, punctuality, the quality of costumes, uh, the quality of the performances, um, venue management, audience management, all these things will kind of be able to be picked up from the material that you share. So please um, uh, do lean towards recorded. If you do not have them, then again, give us as much material as, as can give us as much information as possible. Brian Monzo, the project is running for six months. If my plan is to visit three venues in one month, is that in order or the visit to three venues needs to be spread out to six months? Uh, no, you don't have to utilize every moment of the six months. Uh, it's just that you cannot utilize anything after the six months. Uh, if you do want and are able to, um, it's a bit ambitious, but if you do want to and are able to, to visit three venues in one month, then that is the work plan you should present. And uh, I saw a hand up from Chevy Kev. Yeah, hi, Kati. Thank hi. you for this uh, info session. Yeah. So my question, for example, if you're planning on having a musical uh, performance on the stage, can you allocate part of the budget for recording of the performance? So that's both sound and visual. I want to say yes, uh, but I, I think I have to confirm with uh, Hasita. So you're saying you're performing on the stage and you are recording this performance for future distribution. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have to confirm. Hasita, uh, would that be okay to yes, have? Yes, yeah. Would that be okay as long as it's reasonable in respect to the rest of the budget? Okay. Yes, so you can have your recording crew uh, included in your included in your budget. Okay, thanks. Yeah, perfect. All right, we have five minutes to go. Um, again, Daniel Mwangi, if you're in the audience, you can hold on to the end of the session and I can give you a, a small description of our work in film. Um, otherwise, I'm taking any final questions. We are still taking questions over email. We're still taking questions over social. So if you do have anything that was not clarified in this session or if in the process of doing your application, something else comes up, um, please do um, send it to us and we'll be able to respond. We respond to the emails, we respond to the DMs. Um, and as I mentioned, we'll be updating the FAQs uh, with with the questions that have been asked today so that um, other people can also benefit from that. Um, Sally, should the budget include the equipment on the technical rider or is that included in the 50K venue fee? 
so the 50K venue fee gets you access to the venue as well as the uh, material as listed on the on the sheet that has the different venue capacities. Uh, as mentioned, it will be updated with a bit more detail. Um, so you don't need to rehire that equipment. If you have additional equipment that is not available that you will need for your performance, then that you can add to your budget. Uh, Alang has uh, <laughs> an opportunity. He says, um, he's already seeing a bomb musical lineup just from the guys logged in. I think we should apply as a collective as well. Um, uh, we are happy to step away and let you conspire uh, if it brings us beautiful work. So um, yeah, please look at the other names. If you know each other, if you'd like to know each other, um, you can message one another directly without it going through the direct chat box, say hello. Um, we love our collaboration, we really do. All right, um, so three minutes. Thank you all for your interest. Thank you all for your questions. Um, we love questions because it means that you're really engaging with the thing um, and really thinking about how to um, adapt your work for um, the available um, capacities. And that's really great. Um, we're really looking forward to all your applications. You still have 16 days to get them in. Um, we hope that our application has been as accessible as possible. Um, if you do have any additional questions about the, do the document, again, please feel free to write them in. If you have any challenges with links, et cetera, we're on standby to help with any of that. Um, but thank you again for your time this morning. It's been really nice uh, to interact with you. It's been nice to see some familiar uh, names um, and hear some familiar voices. Um, and yeah, we are, we are here for you. We are always happy to hear from you and really look forward to your amazing applications and to the work that we'll be doing together um, next year. Um, yes, the recording will be shared. Uh, we'll notify you via our socials when it's uploaded. Um, and that is the same for the updated FAQs and the updated uh, document describing what's available at the different venues. So um, again, share, tell a friend, tell a friend. Um, and thank you so much. Um, I'll stay online for another, say, 10 minutes in case someone was feeling shy. <laughs> uh, or if you have any questions about HIVA. Uh, but otherwise, uh, we'll release you into your day to go do the amazing things that you're always doing and look forward to your applications. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Dawn says, congratulations to all who will get the funding opportunity. So receive your congratulations in advance. Thank you all for your kind words in the comments. You're very welcome for this session. Um, you're very welcome. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Uh, anyone with a question or you just wanna gossip, just let me know, I'm here. <laughs> Martina, why do you want to leave? Can stay and have a cup of water with me. Hi, Akati. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, I know. You know, I'm seeing guys leave, but I'm also seeing now those who have remained. Are we here tonight?
the gossipers do we yes, get to gossip to tell me, <laughs> to tell me all the hot stories that are happening in Mombasa <laughs> Okay, I wish I could stick around and gossip, <laughs> but I have to run along and yeah. get about my day and work and also start getting a move on this grant. But the it was so nice yes. to see you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Too. Yeah, and finish on reporting on this other grant that we already have. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, have a great right. day. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Akati, hi. Hi, Victor. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Sorry, I think I walked into the meeting late. Uh, what are the application timelines? Like, uh, do we have deadlines? Yes, the deadline is the 20th of December. Oh, okay. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. We opened on the 20th, um, so it's open for a month. Uh, the application is online. Do you have do you have uh, access to the application link? Have you seen that? Unfortunately, no. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that's where we can <laughs> begin. So um, are you on, if you go to our social, uh, our Instagram, mm. there's a link tree. You can go to his stage yeah. or you can go to yeah. our website, www.hivafund.com. And under the funding tab, you go to the stage and you get uh, all the ah. there. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, Raphael asks, let me come back to that. Um, can three people, Jack Tony asking if three people can apply separately as individuals using projects they did together. Uh, three people applying separately for the same project would be a uh, confusion. It would bring confusion. If it's the same project, I would recommend that you apply together. Uh, because no, if what, you, I, what I mean is, mm. uh, you missed it. I mean, uh, three people who have done their project, they've been doing their projects together. Yes. But now going forward, they want to apply for their different projects. But now you see there's a question that was asking for you to show your previous work. So I'm just asking if we can link our previous work to that those these projects that we've been doing together. Uh, yes, I think the only thing there would be is that the role in the previous projects should be somehow continuous. Or it would, you know, it needs to make sense. Um, so that if if you're presenting, uh, I don't know, like a music project, and then you show us your previous work in, um, stand up comedy, it will be difficult. You know, there'll be a bit of a gap. But if it, the work is quite similar and the role, so you've been a director, you've been a director, you're going to be a director, or at the very least, let's say you've been a filmmaker, you're going to continue being a filmmaker. Then that will be easy for us to draw a thread. So, uh, let me be more precise and say, uh, person A is applying for his project and uh, we are filmmakers and person A was a director in this film he's saying he did and then person B applies as a producer uh, with his different film again, then maybe we have another person who is a cinematographer but wants to be a producer but again he's still linking you to the same project. Uh... I mean, I suppose it should be fine. Um, are you guys clear on your copyright ownership, et cetera? So none, yeah, of the we... three, none of the three will come up and say such and such a person was not involved in the project because that would be an issue. But if if you're all if you all worked on the project and you're all able to utilize that in your future work, you know, this aside from this grant, you are always going to be able to say, this is my film, then that's not an issue. Because we know yeah, we, films and, and films are work, all that right. is so, very collaborative. There's there's no one person who did, okay, I suppose you can do a film alone. But in general, if it's something that was developed by a group and you were part of that group, then that's fine. We'll make it work. Because that's just a reference document. Is that clear? 
Yes, that's clear. Now we had issues. We thought maybe it will, you know, sometime when you're looking from your end you're, and you're like, I these people could have just maybe come up with one thing rather than, you know, people want to grow in different directions and they feel they mm -hmm. can do better as individuals with other teams rather than again sticking together as a, as a team. Mm -hmm. So we thought maybe on your end you would look at it and say this this sounds selfish or this doesn't look okay. We really wanted to get it from you. Um, we are working with, uh, the panelists are going to include, um, working artists. So we, we, we do try to take into consideration all the stuff that we know about how artists work. So, uh, we know that, um, sometimes you come together for a short period and then you, um, go into different life paths. Um, sometimes like you can be a director in this one and an actor in that one, and it doesn't mean that you're neither. So, um, the people who will be reviewing the applications do have a sense of what the sectors, uh, actually look like. And so, um, if, if a question like that came up from someone who may not be as, as versed in a Kenyan performing art scene, there's someone who would be able to say, no, that makes sense. And it's completely fine. And if there's an additional question around, um, ownership, et cetera, we would just simply reach out and ask for any kind of documentation that would be needed, but I, I don't think it would come up. Okay. Um, Wanjiko, you're still unclear about the site fee. Is the 50K site inclusive of the thousand euros? When you're doing your budget, uh, any venue that you need to go to, will have a venue fee that's the 50k so if you if by included in the thousand euros you mean that it will be paid out of the thousand euros then the answer is yes you don't need to find an additional 50k but it does mean that you then have nine hundred and fifty thousand for the rest of your spend is that clear Uh, Wanjiko, you can give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Yes, it's clear. Okay, great. Um, anyone else? Any final questions? We have one minute. No worries, Wanjiko, it's okay. All right. Uh, again, in case of anything, please feel free to email us, DM us. Um, yeah, <laughs> email us or DM us. Those are your best options. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, Jackton, uh, collectives get 3,000 per venue, individuals 1,000 per venue. Happy convincing. Talk in terms of films. I I don't. I don't understand. Oh, Regan, you're you're quite late. We're finished. <laughs> we finished ten minutes ago. This is um final final questions. I suppose if you have one, you can ask. You're welcome, George. Uh, otherwise, if no further questions, if you're clear, then uh, everyone else is free to leave. Um, Regan will also be um, posting the video from the session on our socials in a day or two, so you can watch it then. Um, and we'll be updating the FAQs. But did you have a specific question you had come to ask? Then I can answer that for you before I also log out. Yes, uh, thank you very much my only question uh is for for the have fund i realize that there are solo there are where you can apply for solo uh projects and where you can apply for group projects but when you apply for the solo projects you still have to have a team with you so this is my question uh is this the same thing or is completely different uh the solo and the and the group project that is my question i don't know if it makes sense um it it doesn't 
to me. Uh, could you maybe ask it again or give a bit more context? Sure, sure, sure. When applying for it, uh, you can apply as a solo, all right? Or you can apply as a company or as a team. Yes. Hello? Hello, Regan, if you're speaking, we can't hear you. All right, um, I'll stick on for three more minutes till quarter past. Um, then I'll end the recording and I can hand that over to Olivia. Um, looks like Regan has dropped off. All right, everyone, thank you and have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Happy December and happy applying. All right.